Hello, I'm Wayne Partridge, a very old Christian businessman. Welcome to What is Your Soul? We're going to look at that in just a minute. And this is not very long. It's going to be just a few minutes. I want to tell you 30 seconds about myself so that you know that I'm not some fruitcake, some nutcase out there. I've been in racing. You can see the Sprint car. Oh, it's over here. Fuel dragsters, racing motors, transmissions. Um, won a lot of races and broke some records. Um, been in a lot of businesses and that's enough about me. This is not about me. This is about you. All right, let's find out what your soul is. All right, first of all, God let you be born into this world as a living soul and in a body with a free will. You can you control your own destiny. Got that? All right. You have sperm from your father and an egg from your mother. They conceive and is called conception. Those two join together, plant themselves into your mother's, um, yeah, your mother. That's the food chain. That's what I call it. That's where they get their nourishment. And then the body starts to grow at that time, at that very moment of conception, you became a eternal living soul that will never ever die. The, the body lives <clears throat> for nine months, gets either aborted or born. Once the body is born, it begins to die. It will die either with disease, an accident, or old age. And the very moment the heartbeat stops that you're dead, your soul, you, that are going to live forever, are going to separate from that body and you're going to go instantly into either heaven or hell, one or the other. Here's why I know. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. <laughs> At that time, that's Adam. When he sinned, he plunged the entire human race into hell. So we are born sinners. And Satan is trying to tell everybody that everybody goes to heaven sooner or later one way or another. And that's, that's wrong. God says that when you separate from the body, you, you are in that soul. You are the soul. You are going to go heaven or hell. He has a plan. Romans 5 8 but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us while we were yet sinners if you're a sinner if 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 you're not a Christian if you've never been born again or saved then you're <laughs> That's, that fits you just right. While you are a sinner, Jesus Christ died for you. Let's go on. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is hell, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll give you a, a verse now called John 3.16. 
kind of puts everything together easy to understand for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's one of my favorite verses for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son begotten means unique or one of a kind there's only one Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him should not perish whosoever believes in their heart that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for their sin will not perish in the flames of hell and end up in the lake of fire for all eternity but have everlasting life that's what it's talking about Jesus Christ paid our sin debt and all we have to do is believe it in our heart all right John 3:36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him Simple You're saved you have eternal life If you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and you trust him for that then you have eternal life If you don't you have the wrath of God forever and ever. Let's go on. Revelation 21.8, you got to get a hold of a word called unbelieving. Unbelieving means that you don't believe the gospel. The gospel is the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins was buried and rose again the third day had victory over death that's the gospel and Revelation 21 8 get a hold of this now but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable homosexuals and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death if you die unbelieving you're going to be in the lake of fire after you spend however long it takes for God to finish the millennium I don't want to get into this but after the millennium is the lake of fire the the final judgment and it's called the great white throne judgment you don't want to even hear about that it's so horrible but if you die in your sin you will be there all right the D revelation 2010 and the devil that deceived them hear that you know who them is you and me and the rest of the world the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and where the beast and the prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and that's exactly what happens to a sinner that dies unbelieving they're going to end up in the lake of fire and be tormented day and night forever and ever and the last verse John 3 17 we heard John 3 16 for God so loved the world that's you for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so that's it you're either saved or an unbeliever which are you if you're an unbeliever and would like to be saved that's why I'm here I I have such a burning passion to see 
sinners, unbelievers come to Jesus Christ and to be saved and born again and have an eternal soul that's going to live in heaven forever and ever. And if you'd like that, all you have to do is ask God, well, I'm going to pray with you, but all you have to be is sincere. This is not just fire insurance. You just say some words and you're okay. No, you got to be sincere about this with God. you got to really believe it and mean it. All right, I'm going to pray with you right now, and then we're going to, we're going to close out. Father in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. I believe I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my life. And save my soul. Save me. Make me a new person in Christ. Help me to change from my old ways into a new person. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, I pray sincerely in my heart that you meant that. And I'm going to pray every day for you and for other souls that need to be saved. And I'm going to encourage you by saying, find a good Bible-believing uh, church, not the Catholic Church, not the Jehovah Witness Church, not a cult church, but a good Bible-believing church. And grow in faith and righteousness. And I'm with that, I'll say good day.